It gives you some information about it, some field marks. This is not my go-to app to identify a bird species, but this is my go-to app to find birds. I don't know why it's saying rare and it's there all year long, but apparently. Those are a list of all the birds and things that you might see. Let's take out of this, go home. If you just want to look up a bird and find out something about it, you can study birds this way. They're green-winged teal currently up at the Hillsborough County Recycling Center. And here's some information about the green-winged teal. Multiple photos, males and females, different plumages. I can't play this over the internet or through the Zoom meeting, but there are uh, calls if there's a bird that has a song that you know or like you, you might recognize. And it gives you range maps. Range maps from Cornell's apps are the most current, best apps of all. If you've got Sibley's on your phone or Kaufman's, their maps are only updated every time they publish. Sibley's, I mean, um, not Sibley's, but Cornell updates their apps on a regular basis and gives you great, um, good range maps all the time. So that's another great resource there. Hey, we can see at least Grebe. So I know I'm pretty fast on Merlin on this one, Mary. It was designed to be. Does anybody okay. have any questions on the first two? All right. Beep, beep, beep. All right. This is one of my favorite apps. You can see all the different bird apps they have. Now we do have a bunch of bird apps. There's great other apps that you can use for birding, like weather and tides, nest watch. This is the next app is the Warbler Guide. The Warbler Guide is a companion to the book. The um, it's not really a field guide. It's a guide on warblers, strictly on warblers, or birds of North America. 53 plus or minus in species. They have some other birds in that are warbler-ish, but are not warblers. You set the, the default view in the menu on the left. I'll look at my notes, make sure I've covered everything. All right. This is a great guide. If you're looking at a small bird, you know it's a warbler, but you can't figure out what it is. And I'm more impressed with it all the time. So you set the, what I have set here is called 3D view. You set the time of year. I'm going to click spring and summer and look at the bird in the top right corner. I'm going to go to the topmost bird here. Spring and summer, bay breasted warbler in, is listed in the top right and a black pole warbler. If I go in fall winter, it changes. So the black and white warbler is now present here in the winter. So you want to make sure when you're using this app, if you're actually using it, to study what's currently present that you change the time of year. You can select regions and then you can select the order listing. I don't know my warblers well enough to look at them taxonomic order. Um, you might consider putting them in color grouping, but usually when I'm in it, I, I, I have kind of an idea. I think it might be a pathonotorious and I'll, I'll look for it by name. 3D view. All right, so for some reason I'm not in the 3D view. This is the default view here. I'll try to get there. So I have a, a bird I'm thinking about. I think it might be a black-throated green. I hear there's one reported in the local area. So I'm going to select a black-throated green. Immediately it comes up, and it gives me some comparison species below it. And then in other words, species that are might be a lot like the black and or the black throated green. And looking at it, it wouldn't seem obvious that the, the green is anything like a black and white warbler, unless I'm looking at it from below. So this is where it comes really co wicked cool. There's a button up here at the top, it's called 3D. If I press that, I can rotate this bird's view. And if I'm looking at this bird from below, you can see now why you might be confused whether or not you're looking at a black and white warbler sitting on a limb versus a black-throated green. 
I could look at it at all angles. I remember I was um, some years ago, I was out birding with Mary and Doug. There was a brown bird sitting in the tree above me. I'd never seen it from below. I couldn't figure out what it was. And I asked Doug, what's that bird? He says, it's a Carolina wren. Oh, I'd never seen a Carolina wren from below. <laughs> so to look at them from every angle and appreciate the various views of them. And I, I just really enjoy that particular feature. There are tabs below each of the birds. There's a comparison species. Let me go back to comparison species just for a second. This little eye button comes up. And if you touch it, it'll give you some field marks. Some reason it's giving me field marks for, um, okay, there we go, songs. Light-centered, olive oracles, variably black-throated, and then it gives you the field marks of the competing species, the species you're trying to compare it with. If I touch the song button, it actually gives me uh, this little icon here, the, the two, what is that, eighth notes? It gives me songs that I can play. You can't hear it, and I can't uh, play it over the internet right now, so I can compare the, the chip calls or the flight calls of the two different species. Get rid of that. There are tabs underneath here. This is the overview tab. First is a kind of a profile view of what the bird looks like. This diagram shows that the particular version I'm looking at, there is a tab. Let's go back a second here. The black throated green has bright and drab plumage. And so you want to make sure you're picking which one because it changes by season or per, uh, also by gender, right? And age. So I go on the overview. I can see it's got kind of a dark uh, rump, dark uh, olive green back, yellowish head, a streaky white underneath and a black chin. The undertail covers and its feathers, what it looks like, its location where you can see it. And where you can find it in this particular species in the mid levels of the trees. I can look through um, various views of the bird that gives us descriptions when you're looking at it from straight underneath, etc. There's some photos of them for different comparisons at different angles. And of course, Sometimes we're not sure what it is exactly because of its age. So here is, it gives you a code here. It's a little hard to see on the line, but it says AD for adult male slash first year male. Um, there's a female, adult female first year spring SP. And those codes are explained in the uh, literature that comes with it. And then range maps. Again, I think the uh, most the best range maps are in the Cornell uh, Merlin because they're kept more current than these the uh, publication dates of these. You're under two minutes, Mick. Okay. Um, let me see. I want to make sure I've covered everything I want to cover on this. Let me look at my notes. Oh, the funnel button over here. I can click a funnel button. I'm having trouble identifying a bird. I'm pretty sure it's a warbler. It's got blue wings. And look, I've already got some birds selected underneath. It has um, some wing bars on it. I was aiming for a cerulean if you haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> it's got a blue head. And I, it narrows it down to two possible species. So that funnel can help you with not just with the views, but you can also do, I think the funnel also works with um, songs and voices. And I know a lot of us are not as, as proficient with uh, the calls and all that, but it is a uh, very useful tool. The book has a great explanation on how to learn uh, the songs, whether they're rising, falling, and examples of, of the graphs. All right, so that is the um, Warbler Guide. All right, we'll go on. That was my beeper. That was the eight. 
This app I learned from in um, Birdwatcher's Digest. This is LarkWire. The only issue with LarkWire as an app is that it's only available as an app for iPhones. You cannot get it for your Android. You know, that archaic thing that some of us are carrying around still. A little joke there. You have to buy bird packs for LarkWire. And those are the prices like $10. But fortunately, LarkWire is also enabled on, on the web. So you can buy a subscription for LarkWire on the web. It's going to give me some difficulty now. Watch. There we go. When you use it on a, uh, as a, in a, on a tablet, you want to make sure it's full screen. So in LarkWire, the gear means settings and home is where we're at. So I'm going to go to the gear setting. Again, you purchase. So the, these are the various song packs that you can buy. I've purchased Landbirds of North America, East and Central, and then the Waterbirds as well. And you can set the game levels. This goes everything from a beginner um, game level. This button here. Here's the song packs. I forget when I'm doing this that I've got a, I'm looking at my iPad and you guys are looking at the screen. You choose song packs for what you're going to play. You, you pick your level, intermediate, advanced, and master. Uh, the type of game I'll show in a second gallery, field, or mixed, LarkWire decides, and playlists. You can create your own playlist. And I'm actually going to back up and start there by creating a quick playlist. Go away. Oh, great. And if it didn't work, if it worked perfectly, it wouldn't be technology, would it? Trying to figure out why I'm getting the stupid. Okay, there we go. All right, the creative playlist. And you don't have to remember this. You, you, the directions are, are available online. I can search, and this is where you can create a customized playlist. I was having a dickens of a time learning the difference between the various videos. So all I did was to um, pull up go through it, find the Vireos that we have locally, the blue-headed, the, the three that were confusing me the most, the red-eyed, the yellow-throated is the red-eyed. All I did was check box these, and the wide-eyed Vireo. So I ended up with a playlist of just the Vireos that are locally around here. Once I was done, I can... Go in, select my Vireos as part of my game, choose my playlist, and try to play a game. The problem with Vireos is, as a game is that there are no Vireos considered in the beginning game level. So I had to go back, I'm going to set it to advanced level, and we'll set it to gallery so we can see what's going on, and play the Vireos. Over here, within the groups of birds, the playlist, you can select whether they're all in various versions thereof. So I'm going to select them all in. And now I've got a playlist of blue-headed Vireo, white-eyed, and uh, red-eyed Vireo. I'm going to try to hold my microphone close to my um, speaker on my um, iPad and see if you can hear this. Now it's playing into the, the, no one can hear that, can you? Mary, can you hear that? No, cannot. Okay. Well, it's playing the, the song of a wide-eyed vireo. And if you, it shows you pictures of the birds in one view, and it gives you a description of the songs in the other view. The yellow-throated vireo really is very consistent. And then Menomic is three, eight, three year, three, eight, three year. It's slow, it's barrier very burry sounding and so i would toggle back and forth between the um the picture and the description and then you play it so i'm gonna play a start the game 
by clicking the start button down at the bottom. Now, I know you're not going to hear it. And what's playing is, I'm up here. Where are you? And I think that's the red eyed Vireo. And indeed, I got a little thing. Hey, I got a point. Now it's going to play a different song. And you keep, you keep guessing which song that is. And indeed, I got the blue headed Vireo right. I'm going to touch and get it wrong now. Right now is the white eyed Vireo, which uh, what someone described it to me as sounding like R2D2. It has a introductory note and then a kind of a tumble of notes. So I'm going to intentionally pick the red eyed Vireo. And I get, no, no, actually, I got the wrong bird. I can hardly hear it. So, um, but anyway, it was the blue eyed Vireo. I lose a point. It backs up. At this point, I can replay whichever birds I want that I got wrong and I got right. So this is a lot like Rosetta Stone. I think the most useful list that I created is a Florida woodland list. And I created it by going into search. Remind you here again, I went into search. I customized it. And all I did is I went through kind of quick. This may not be complete. I might have some birds that are not from Florida. At least I try to get rid of all the ducks and then hingos, that sort of thing. So I created a list. You can customize this as much as you want. I can set the level. I'm going to set the beginner. And now if I play in gallery, it'll play these particular birds in the order. I can select the particular birds that I want to hear and see. I just want to hear songs with rough tones, and then it'll do that playlist. So now is, there are only three birds in that playlist. So I'm going to have to add some more birds to it. You're down to a minute to go. Okay. At the top here, you see this little triangle thing here? That can change the group of birds that you're wanting to play. Lastly, the more experienced way to go is fieldless, where you don't get to see the bird's picture. All you get is the blank screen. And it plays songs for you. You say whether or not you know it, you're honest. Oh, I missed that one. And it gives you a score. Lastly, if you just want to see the, uh, look up the songs of a bird, you can browse and search up. And we'll look for the Easterwood Peewee. And here are the, the songs of an Easterwood Peewee. Now there's two categories sometimes, and it's within one of those categories. And I can listen to the, songs that recorded in florida new york some of these are have different um cate categories slightly differently okay like the great crescent flycatcher you can have the song or the calls so that is lark wire <clears throat> get a little horse there my sounding still good mary i can hear you okay you're out you're out of your eight minute time on this one oh, okay and we're at 7 40. Really, I have a couple more things to show. I'm not going to cover Sibley's because it's really pretty. I'm going to show it real fast. It's very straightforward. Um, and it's very similar to the field guide. But the, the thing about the Sibley's app is that this is my go to app for birds on the I, if I've got my cell phone with me, I go here, but it's so easy to use. I'm going to get out of that. <clears throat> I want to go to iBird Pro. Okay, and they're wanting to pester me. This is the opening screen for iBird Pro. If you know banding codes, just like in um, eBird, I can put the banding code in, which is a lot faster than putting in um, the whole name. But first, before we go there, there's a menu off to the left. You can filter your, your what you're looking for based on birds around me. Most of these you have to, um, you may have to pay for like time of day. Birds around me, that's an add-on. I don't wanna do that. Location is free. So I can filter this down for Florida. I'm not gonna do that right now, but you can. Some of the other um, things that you can search for. 
you have to actually pay for and i'm not going to uh i haven't paid for it i just bought did the basic pay and i like it that way it seems to work fine for me this bird sleuth over here is also an add-on thing you can browse birds you can filter it you can look at your purchases you can purchase we're just going to go ahead and browse so I'm gonna look up a. I want to look up something. They had a bird in flight. On a, I know what it was. I'm gonna look up a black-bellied plover. So black-bellied plover's banding code is BBPL. These are available in the, uh, the Ornithological Union. You can search it up. I like to. I learned those because it's so much faster when you're in the field trying to bird to use the. Um, banding codes than it is to type northern to get the cardinal mockingbirds and all those different species. So first up, you get some um, colors of the, the bird in uh, various breeding plumages. I love the black belly plover because on the wing, it's the one of the plover it's easiest to recognize. He's the one with the black armpits. He shows you immature, a breeding male and a female and their field marks. Here's you the nice, neat picture of it. The same ones that we just looked at a second ago. Come on, there we go. There's that flight picture I was talking about. And then mature. At the bottom, the range, again, I don't really trust the range maps except for uh, Cornell's. It gives lots and lots of d detailed information that's not available generally in any of the other apps. Most of the apps give you a pretty brief description, maybe that discusses their calls. This gives you a lot more information. What I really like about it is the photos. It has a nice selection of photos generally, even better than the ones in the Audubon app, which is free. This one is a I think I paid $10 for it several years ago. You can uh, peruse it, catch that bird in flight. A lot of the apps, the Audubon app generally has a bird sitting in profile like he's posing for a photo. Unlike these, these this app gives you a better variety of views of the birds, even though these are also obviously very clear, but it does give you different poses than just sitting on a branch. Gives you key identifying marks under identify. You know, I haven't realized I'm going through this menu down here at the bottom of the screen. Ecology, apparently, there we go, there's a little leg. <clears throat> it's that low, uh, considered low risk, least concern. You really get into it like uh, some of us, this gives you all kinds of um, the order of the family, that sort of thing. I haven't used this feature very much. Flickr has been disabled. It used to be a great resource for looking at bird pictures and that, but they've become for a fee and they're not willing to pay for it in this. This, if you, I, I've been getting into audio. One of the apps you'll see on the list is Audacity, which is a free app for editing uh, audio files. Directions for editing it is on uh, eBird's question and answer thing. But it gives you a phonetic description Various apps shows you the son a sonogram and a, a spectrogram. I don't know if you can hear this or not. Let me try. It. No, Let's we can't. It. Let me put it back in here again. I want to try it one more time? Not at all. No, not hearing okay. anything. Anyway, if you get it, you can listen to it too. <laughs> Similar species. You keep a journal. I don't use these at all. There's a little thing at the bottom. They call it Birdopedia. Birdopedia has been several different things. It's gone away, but it really does. It jumps you to Wikipedia. And for some reason, it took us to gray plover and not the black belly plover. The it's the same people. bird. That's the European name. Oh, okay. The same bird, European name. Live and learn. Those Europeans that learn to speak English. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if you've got a feeder bird, like a, a noca, which is the northern cardinal, it 
it gives you some suggestions on feeder types and feed. And that is the app iBird Pro, iBird Pro. Where am I on time? I've got 14 minutes? Yep. Okay, the last thing, I'm gonna show you a couple of photos. Uh, the, some of these were featured on the bird, the photo part. Um, the birding tech things that I do include more than apps. Uh, this is a photo. That's me sitting in my chair in front of my house. I'm about 40 feet to this bird bath. I took a laser pointer that I never aim at a bird, but I pointed at my camera so you could see more, me clearly. And I took photos of the bird bath using my um, cell phone. I took my iPhone, put it on a tripod, and set up right in front of the bird bath. And for the price of my phone, which I already own, a tripod, which I have because of other photography, for uh, $16, I was able to get this photo of bluebirds taking a bath. Include drops visible on the, the, the male, pretty male bluebird in the bath. This bird's a little bit out of focus, but you can see the pin feathers, the feelers on its beak. And an I, in an iPhone, you can do stop motion photography. And that is uh, a pretty um, mockingbird that was sitting in my bird bath. So let me change gears here on you. Um, okay. Hmm, where'd it go? I've lost my share and all that. Uh, oh my goodness. If I put it to sleep. Work tech, if it worked perfectly every time, it wouldn't be tech, would it? Here we go. There's my menu. I'm trying to stop that. Stop the share. Boom. One of the other interesting things, if you're a teacher, the teachers are all Zoom teaching with the kids. Well, it turns out you can add a visual presenter to your to your camera. So you, I was using a regular facial camera. Here's a couple of three pieces, little pieces of tech. This is an old cheap external battery that I have, I can charge when I go out because when I bird with Mary for five hours, especially if my phone is not brand new, I run out of battery power. So you can plug this into your cell phone as you're going e-birding and keep your cell phone still running. Hold on a second. This Mick. is a little bracket. Uh, Mick, hold on just a second. Yeah. Folks, if you are not seeing this in large screen, up in the upper right corner, you should have a little icon that says view. Click on that and click speaker view, and that's going to make mix screen much bigger. All right, go ahead, Mick. Thank you. So anyway, that um, if you missed it, these come in all kinds of size and shapes. This is nothing more than a battery that you can, um, Keep your cell phone charged. This particular one actually also works as a flashlight. Up birding, and you know you're going to be away from your car. I keep a battery with a charging cable with me at all the time. These two pieces of equipment are what I shot the video with the um, the bird bath. This is a cam. I think this is called Camix. It's in the list. This one particular one's for an iOS you can buy for Android. And all I did to take those photos of the birds remotely was to click this button. This bracket is a universal iPhone adapter. You can adapt it to, you can attach it to your, put your cell phone in here for a wide picture of you. Whoops. <laughs> Busted. Give me a second here. Let me put something up here to look at.
put this in your bracket for uh, wide view. Cut it out, camera. Like this, or you can it'll rotate for a horizontal view. Um, so that's some of the tech. There's there's all kinds of other little things that are available online, and that if you look at the email you got, there's about seven or eight pages of uh, tech and. Uh, various things that you can purchase or free or cheap or expensive, everything from uh, moderately inexpensive to moderately expensive. All right. And I've, I've talked myself out. I'll go back to my, let me change view again. Camera view. Here I am. Dun -dun, I'm done. Any questions? All right, uh, we've got about 10 minutes, nine minutes. Questions, comments for Mick? Go ahead at this point, go ahead and unmute yourself if you want to ask a question or make a comment. In the handout, if you download it, besides the description, there's actually links both to the Android story, the app store, um, the things I showed you are both available at Walmart's as well as Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, Mick, what are all the ribbons for? Um, those were my wife. She was a horse rider. My wife passed away. And I'm saying, yeah, those were uh, things she, she won. I think I should take those down. I'm trying to make a little bit of a studio like they do in the morning news. I got the bird books in the background and posters. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, those are my wife's. Uh huh. Mick, uh, I see you have some other uh, apps here: Park Passport, Pocket Ranger. Uh, are are these very useful? And there is is there anything else in here that that you would recommend uh, for birding or you know traveling around Florida? Yes, I, I would. Um, real quick, let me see if I can go back to my. Is my iPad? Yeah, there's you notice that one of the participants today is my iPad. And I, I uh, connected it, and I'm going to pull my iPad back up real fast. So, the things I would recommend above and beyond uh, the first one, if you're doing shore birding, is tides. This app is free, you can set it for any location. That's neat. And so if you're going to go birding um, today, I got it set from a, you can see that the low tide today was at 10 a.m. Ideally, we try to get there where low tide is at dawn because then we can catch the roosting um, shorebirds on the shoals just off the coast there. But you can also set it for, um, I put in, uh, before I go up to Cedar Key, I look ahead of time, I search up Cedar Key and put those in. So that one's pretty wicked cool, and it's free. There are some ads, but that's kind of a so what. Um, voice recorder, if you are really into birding and you want to record and report voices, that's the one recommended by Cornell. Audubon is free. Everyone should know about that one already. Here's one for the photography group. A lot of the um, cameras come with a free app for your camera so you can remote control shoot your camera the same way I did my iPhone with an app. The difference between this and the, the iPhone is that you can actually control on my Canon anyway, I can control the, the uh, point of focus. So if the bird is not perfectly in where I wanted it, I can click that there. Um, the best weather app that I'm uh, that I, in my opinion right now is the Florida Storms app. That's from the University of Florida and it gives great weather forecasts including winds, sunrise, moonrise and all that sort of stuff. Uh, the Pocket Ranger, if you're looking for places to go and park pass are okay. The Raptor ID app, if you're really into Raptors, that's free. If you're reporting a complete rarity, the So Locator will take a photograph and that will report not just where you're standing, I'll start it up real fast. But you can see it shows the heading I'm aiming at. So from where I was standing at this exact point, 127 degrees, 53 minutes, 19 seconds north. Oh, my, there's a compass up above. It shows you the elevation where you're um, 
plus or minus two and three one feet plus the elevation of where you're standing if you do nest watch they want to know what your elevation is so if you're going to shoot a rarity like this whoops wait a second that hummingbird on the wall there well that hummingbird was at this exact location so that one is pretty wicked for um, rare birds and that also was free uh, google earth i like google earth just because i want to look at what maggie marsh looks like before i go up to maggie marsh for my trip which i haven't been there yet that's on my bucket list and this is a free app and of course it's google oh i know this is a great app i'm sorry before i run out of time you don't the one great app for the android you cannot get on the iphone is google lens google lens taps into abc google's database of photos and they've got one of the largest uh, collection of the photos in the world and it has smart technology just like merlin will identify a bird for you you're wondering what plant you're looking at or perhaps butterfly google lens is the app i've not found anything for the iphone that compares to it there are some that compete with it and one is called plant snap which you can do 10 plants free per day but compared to google lens don't recommend it go for google lens if is you have it an free? Android. Yeah, it's free. It's part of Google's Android operating system. Uh, if it's not already on your phone, I, uh, and search it up. But don't use Google. Use DuckDuckGo to do your searches. Um, I, I got a whole deal about Google. They monetize us. There's a, a search engine called DuckDuckGo. Look it up. They will not try to sell you stuff. They don't do not monetize you. It's uh, it is a great search engine and it's free and it does not try to sell turn you into their product, which is what everything, all the other search engine does. Do Mick, could, could you send us a screenshot of your apps? Sure, but they're all in the if you got the document in the email, they're in that. Did um, you did you get it? But not that I I didn't get the uh, email. Sure, I, um, I'll, I'll shoot you a screenshot of those. Yes, if, if you got. If you got a reminder today for the meet, uh, last evening for the meeting, Sandy Townsend sent out a reminder. You scroll down through that reminder for tonight's meeting, the the link to that document is there. Oh, gotcha. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank all okay. of y'all for this. Very welcome. And I, I'd like to add one other thing for any of you who go out on our... Um, uh, ELAP properties, our CELM properties, they use a mat, an app called Avenza, A-V-E-N-Z-A. You do have to download their map of the property, but then with Avenza, you can follow yourself on the map. So you lose your chances of getting lost because it will show you where you are how far you've gone, if you're on the trail, off the trail. And if you happen to be out there and see um, a poacher, for example, or you see somebody who's, um, like I was out on a beach one time and saw people cutting great sheaves of sea oats, you can take a picture, mark the spot on the map, on the Avenza map, and then send it to, um, send it to the CELM office. If you find a place where the trail's been washed out or the, the trail directional sign has been lost, uh, torn down, you can mark that and tell them and it makes it very easy for them to go out and correct the problem. So that's an Avenza uh, app as well. Here's a little um, fun. Blaine, I, I saw your, um, I see your request here and I will do that. And I just did away with my, all my wrinkles by touching up my video in the video settings on your Zoom program. So if, if you're getting some wrinkles, you want to get a few less, you can tweak those with the settings. Well, everyone's here. I just want to put in a little mention of next month's program. 
Uh, it's a good follow on for this one. Mick's been telling us about all these great apps and how they benefit us. Well, next month, uh, we're going to have a pre recorded program by Dr. John Fitzpatrick, who's the director of the Cornell Lab, uh, Cornell University Lab of Ornithology, uh, the father of eBird, basically. And he is going to tell us what becomes of all this data when you put it in there. Uh, we are not the only ones using it. It's being used by researchers all over the world, and they are doing absolutely incredible stuff with all this eBird data. And next month, we're going to learn all about that. Thanks, Doug. I had that in the my PowerPoint, and I forgot to flip forward to that next screen, so appreciate your catching me on that. No problem. I've seen that program, it's well worth seeing. I recommend it for everybody. And folks, I, um, I did manage to get this recorded. We missed, um, we missed the eBird thing. I thought I had the settings and I didn't. Um, so the, the last three quarters of mixed presentation, um, is being recorded, was recorded, and we will eventually figure out how to get that, a link to that onto our website. So if you want to go back and look at it again, at least that much will be available. Are we on mute? Okay, uh, somebody is not on mute, but that's, that, that's okay. If, if you have questions, feel free to, um, speak up. Anything else? I enjoyed the program, Mick. Thank you. Yep. Good, good, good presentation. Good. There's gobs and gobs more in the uh, document. Um, Thank I've you, Mick. Thank you. We totally could not years. take all night. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to try them all out. 